Out of all of the molecules currently being studied to extend lifespan, rapamycin stands head and shoulders above the rest. Plus, I've got a huge announcement at the end of the video. Rapamycin works by blocking an enzyme called mTOR, and you may have heard exercise scientists talking about mTOR because they want to activate it. If you activate mTOR, you build proteins, you build muscle. But by using rapamycin to block mTOR, it extends the lifespan of yeast, worms, flies, and mice. For example, when the interventions testing program used rapamycin, it extended the lifespan of male mice by 23% and 26% in female mice. So how do we match up what exercise scientists recommend about activating mTOR to build muscle, yet this different approach which blocks mTOR by using rapamycin to extend lifespan? Well, here's where things get interesting. I've spoken a lot on this channel about how our muscles decline with age and how we want to try and fight that decline by using resistance exercise and protein intake. And it seems that our muscles also recognize that they're becoming weaker because as we age, they overactivate mTOR. They're trying to build proteins and maintain their strength. The trouble is, overactivation of mTOR in aged muscles, it doesn't cause protein building. Instead, because our muscles are overactivating mTOR and trying to rebuild new proteins, the muscles are never allowed a chance for another process to happen, which is called autophagy. So autophagy is the cell clearance process, and that happens when mTOR is switched off. So what appears to happen in our muscles is that over time they collect old, damaged components, and they're never allowed a chance to flush away those damaged components to rebuild new ones. In short, the mTOR balance is disrupted, and it's possible that if we can restore that mTOR balance, we can hold on to our muscle strength and extend lifespan. Which is an incredibly exciting prospect, so what are the next steps for human clinical studies? Well, we have to make sure it's safe, and in clinical medicine, rapamycin has got a bit of a dirty name. It's used for organ transplant patients, so if you needed a kidney transplant, you'll likely be on rapamycin to help prevent your immune system from attacking that donated kidney. Which has led to concerns that if rapamycin is used in otherwise healthy people, it may dampen the immune system. However, a phase 2 study showed that if you blocked mTOR, you can actually enhance the immune system. The study showed that the group who took the mTOR blockers actually had an improvement in their antiviral gene expression and improvements in their response to the influenza vaccine compared to the comparison group. But unfortunately, a subsequent larger phase 3 study didn't show these improvements, but crucially, there was no worsening of the immune system. These studies give us confidence that we can proceed with rapamycin clinical studies. So long as the rapamycin is correctly dosed, it doesn't appear that it's going to worsen the immune system. So I've set up a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study of older adults and we're exploring the effect that rapamycin has on muscle function. The main objective of the study is to make sure that rapamycin doesn't worsen muscle performance. So remember, exercise scientists try and activate mTOR to rebuild muscle, but rapamycin blocks mTOR. So we need to make sure that rapamycin given once a week doesn't cause issues. Now again, overall, we think that giving rapamycin once a week to try and restore that mTOR balance will overall improve muscle performance. But how clinical studies work is that you first need to address safety. So once we've established safety, then we can do a subsequent phase 3 trial to figure out if intermittent rapamycin dosing does improve muscle performance. So for this initial study, we're taking 40 participants, 20 in the rapamycin group and 20 in the placebo group. To be included in the study, you have to be between 65 and 85 years old and you don't already exercise because what we'll be doing is providing exercise bikes to each participant and the participants will be exercising Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and then having either the rapamycin or placebo on the Saturday. By setting up the trial in this way, we expect that the placebo group will improve their muscle performance because they'll be exercising over the 13-week period. But what we want to figure out is will the rapamycin group also improve, ideally at the same rate and possibly even more. And I'm so pleased to announce that after two years of fundraising, we've finally reached our targets. So thank you to everyone who has watched my videos and donated to the study. There were a couple of larger donations that came through that allowed us to reach our near half a million dollar target. And again, thank you to everyone who's also purchased microvitamin, because the sales for microvitamin allowed us to reach this target. 
This is a truly special community and it's only the first study that we're going to do. There's many more that I've got in mind and with your help we can do them. We're going through the final setups for this rapamycin and exercise study and ideally all going well. We're hoping to recruit our first patient in June this year 2024. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next video.